This is ridiculous. This is getting good too, y'all. I don't even know. You guys are going to have to start commenting again. Yeah. I can't believe this. You pay your Montes and they can't even keep your stuff going. Anyway, well, guys, I'm sorry. I got interrupted by something out here in these shenanigans in these streets. Hey, Tasha, Lord and Nadine. For those of you who are new, um, we were talking about is soulmate a real thing? You know, and um, I had to make this part too, just in case what we were talking about before saved itself somehow. So we'll just um, make this part too. Um, but um, thanks, Otis. Uh, Nadine and Lord and Tasha. So what the question had is, is a soulmate the real thing? And if you are with, married, um, married, betrothed, engaged, even with a boyfriend or girlfriend to someone, and then you think or you feel very strongly, not because you want to creep or just have an excuse, but you seriously, genuinely feel like, oh my gosh, I just met my soulmate. What does one do, if anything? Um, and it was so many fantastic um, comments. Um, Valerie Adams was saying, oh, well, so sorry, too bad. You made a commitment to somebody else and you have to hold to that, to that commitment. Um, oh, well. <laughs> that was um, Don's, I, I call it Don, Valerie's uh, um, topic. Hey, Sonia, I don't know what you guys heard last or when I cut off, but I was talking about soulmate for us friendships as well. And like I was saying, Sonia and I as a friend since I was like, I don't know, 12 or 13, I think. And I'm now almost pushing 50 hard. <laughs> and we have gone years without speaking, not because something went on, but life happened. We got lost and got out of touch. Hi, Dale, and things like that. So, but when we came back together, it was like we never left, you know? So I really think, and that's a soulmate for a friend. And the second definition that I read included friend as a part of the soulmate situation. It said a person ideally suited to another as a close friend or romantic partner. And I just never seen um, friend used with the word soulmate. So that intrigued me. I learned something new on today with that. Um, hey, Mousy guys, welcome back. So my question is, you know, if you are, and also Valerie said, if you are in an unhappy union, be it um, a spouse, a girlfriend or a fiance or boyfriend or a fiance, anybody who comes by who is saying the right thing, you know, sending the right things and whatever else, you could be tricked into thinking that they're your soulmate out of being vulnerable because your situation is not good at the time. And that's what we have to be very careful with this soulmate thing, guys. People kick soulmate around like they do love and king and queen. We forever name somebody a queen or a king who is not worthy. <laughs> you know, so um, I'm trying to get all of your comments. Okay. Um, hold on. I'm trying to read everything. Otis is saying, yes, I believe in the concept of soulmates. And I believe that soulmates can be friends. What do you think, Valerie? I mean, and Kashawn, do you think if someone you feel is your soulmate that you can maintain your marriage or your obligation to whom you were obligated to and still have this friend, this soulmate as a friend without crossing the line, even emotionally? You know what I'm saying? And okay, Kashawn said, okay. And yeah, last comment of mine was of me saying that, yeah, I turned out to be a late bloomer, LOL, and it sucks. <laughs> Whatever, he, he said he was a late bloomer, and it sucks. Because he was saying that because I was saying in high school, some of us, or in college, uh, were called ugly, or this, or that, called names and everything else um, during those formidable years where you build social skills. And then some have family members who've called them names all of their lives and things like that. So bring it up to date. Now you are hottie. 
or you looking fine and whatever. And somebody comes by and go, oh, I like your smile or I like your laugh or I like your personality or you guys click on social things or, or politics and you could just talk for hours and hours and hours and whatever else. Is that person may not be your soulmate. You're just starving for attention and you're kind of immature in the social aspect because you've been just bombarded because you was a late bloomer in high school and college and middle school. And so it doesn't necessarily mean this person is your soulmate. You know, uh, that's my opinion on that. And <laughs> yes. Hey, Larry, it's how you doing? Valerie is saying people can smell vulnerability and they will play on that. And then you'll be hurt again. Wow. You guys better hear that. You, I mean, you got wolves out here in sheep clothing. You have parasites. You have leeches that have crawled from under rocks because they can sense, smell, and feel your vulnerability. You know, I, I just, that's just a fact. So we need to be very careful, especially in this age of social media and meeting people from different states, countries, continents, cities, everything else, because we have so much access to so many people, more now than we have ever had in the past decades, you know what I'm saying, in centuries. So therefore, it's easy to meet new people, people with different social backgrounds and cultures and mentalities and, and moral compasses. You know, everybody ain't right up there, and a lot of people want you for something. Not everybody, but we just have to be careful. Hold on, I'm trying to get everybody in. Okay. Oh my gosh, am I freezing again? Okay. Otis is saying, respectfully, I believe that you know that you know that you know. I haven't heard that in years. <laughs> but when you meet that soulmate, and because of this, you won't just think the other person is a soulmate because they're saying nice things and or being nice to you. You'll feel it, he says, and you'll know it. And I'm trying to see if my phone is back up so I can meet, um, Google gave you 18 ways you can know that someone is your soulmate. Hey, Wyona and Susie. Um, Valerie is saying again that some people are great friends, great listeners, great sex partners, <laughs> not necessarily your soulmate. Mm. Yes, yes. <laughs> Yes, and you can, and, and you know, thus the word soul ties. When you have sex with someone, you know, I'm trying to be politically correct. Well, we, we do raw, we do grown folk talk up here. When you're getting it in or getting down with somebody and the deed is done, you create a bond and a soul tie with that individual. And yes, <laughs> really? Um, and, and then you would be almost addicted to them like crack. You, I mean, you lay down with them and they do it just right. Can somebody turn on some air conditioner? Please. <laughs> you do it just right. And, uh, you get caught up in the sauce. You can't nobody, can't nobody come down on a cloud and a unicorn to tell you that's not your soulmate. When all he did or she did was did you real good. Because then you caught up with that soul tie, you know, with the words, that touch, that everything. That doesn't necessarily mean that's your soulmate, beloved. We need to be careful with these words. And yes, some people are just high like great listeners. They're great listeners to everybody, though, not just you. You know, so I just... This topic needs to be discussed because you got people leaving whole relationships. You know, they'll go live in an apartment or a doghouse with somebody that they say they sold me and then left a 3,000 square foot home in the suburbs and cars and everything else because they think this individual, can you turn on the air conditioner, please? Oh my God. <laughs> it's the lights. It's these French fry lights I'm under. Sidebar. That's what people talk about. I didn't bleach my skin. I'm just under the lights, y'all. Come on. But anyway, <laughs> um, Otis is now saying, hey, Ronald, that it's a knowing that goes beyond understanding. So when you discover that soulmate, you just know. And I'm trying to pull up what they say about the 18. We just got to go past 430 today because we got cut off. So I'm allowed to go past 
this. Okay, uh, I can't even believe this. Nothing's working. Verizon owe me some money. Yes, they do. Y yes, they do. Yeah, we're going to have to. Do you have any interference in there? Oh, my gosh. Okay. The 18 warnings, not warning, <laughs> they should be warning size, huh? The 18 ways you know that you are, oh, I feel the air. <gasps> Y'all see me sweating like a potato on Friday? No. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Soulmate. Okay. <clears throat> so I wanted to read you guys. I don't know what's going on with the internet today. But, um, okay, Kushan, what is he saying? I'm sorry, I'm gonna look over there and I'm gonna look, I'm looking, I'm looking. <laughs> I was cold, now I'm sweating. Girl, mental pause. Yes, I'm probably pausing. <laughs> okay, Kushan says, um, I would say that, uh, yeah, if two are together and they meet a soulmate, out somewhere else, then well, it depends on the strength of the bond of the two that's together, whether or not that that person would cross that line, meaning they, meaning that they should keep convos and meeting up with a friend that's of a soulmate to a minimum. Yes, till they strengthen their mate, they are with, with bond to be stronger before things spiral out of control and they land themselves into a complicated situation. Hey, Sonida, I completely agree with that. Um, I, I just, I, it's just a touchy, touchy situation, guys. And I'm just here um, just to see what you guys think about it. Because first of all, the person who contacted me is really, and in, in, um, my heart just went out to the individual because they're really hurting. They're hurting because they feel like they're settling. They feel unhappy, unfulfilled in every way, every shape and form. And they're trying to stay true. Everything that you guys are saying up here, that's what the individual is trying to do. They're trying to love the one they're with. But according to them, I don't know, I'm not there. You know, according to them, it's a hot mess. They've been unhappy for decades. You know, and they asked me, like, do I, what do I do? Do I, do I make everybody else happy? Meaning spouse, her family, his family, everybody who knows them. Do I keep them happy and content and not rock the boat? And I be unhappy or do I go for my happiness? They feel like they have a right to be happy for years and years and years they have put their self on the back burner they have cried they have settled they have put up with all kinds of foolishness and as they were i'll say crap but they said the ish you know trying not to rock the boat trying to do what everybody else want them to do and they're unhappy now they're saying they're at the age where he they want to say bleep it i'm unhappy i'm getting older and I want to be happy. How does that person deal with that, guys? Talk to me. <clears throat> okay, Otis is saying that person that you are talking about is definitely not with her soulmate. <laughs> yeah. And Brandon is saying to Otis, facts. <laughs> so, okay, let's visit that, guys. Let's visit that. I'm not gonna keep this too long. Okay, Rick Lamar, hold on, is saying to love is to die. So what dies? Selfishness must die. Hmm, Susan is saying H-E-L-L -L, with that boat. <laughs> H with that boat, rock it, go be happy. <laughs> Sonia is saying they need to divorce, not because of the soulmate, but before, but for their happiness and peace of mind. That's true. Um, Valerie is saying, when you look for a soulmate outside of the one you with, whether friend or lover, you would be hurt and hurt the other two people. If, they that are, if they're that unhappy, you can stay to keep others happy. It's about the two 
in the relationship. If they are mutually unhappy, they should mutually kiss and say goodbye. Let's just kiss and say goodbye. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and I agree with that. I mean, it should not um, be a decision made because you think you've met your soulmate. Let's remove that individual. If you are unhappy and it cannot be fixed, you know, try to fix it, y'all. Try to get some counseling or whatever. Um, separate. You know, I, I, I like to feel like I believe that you should close one chapter anyway before you enter another chapter. Uh, it just makes things less messy. No blurred lines. Ronald is saying this person doesn't have an issue with their mate, but with taking ownership of their life. Whoa. Yes. Yes. Let me read that again. Yes. Ronald Lindsay is saying this person does not have an issue with their mate, but with taking ownership for their life. Yes. That's profound. That's true. Because, you know, if you leave that person and no one's common friends don't speak to you anymore, family members on both sides don't speak to you anymore. Do you really care for real? Do they pay your bills? What do they give to you that will hold you to the point where you're staying and being completely unhappy? That's what Ronald is saying. Like, you know. Otis is saying, we all, we all know that there is a right way and a wrong way to do things. If we are not happy in the situations that we are in, then we need to just leave. It's not easy to do, but oftentimes extremely necessary. Okay, let's talk about leaving for a moment, okay? Hold on. Oh, she was saying great responses here, great responses. <laughs> the king is saying great responses. But... We have to be careful, guys. And I deal with, I do a lot of public speaking in the past and things like that. And I deal because I'm a domestic violence survivor. And so I deal with a lot of women. And the one thing when we have these meetings and these events, um, the one thing rings true across the board, black, white, checkered, crazy, rich, po, is they all say they hate when people say, just leave. Why don't you just leave? They don't take into account the financial situation. Sometimes those situations, the male has taken total control of everything to the point where they have no income of their own. So they have to think of their children, food in their mouths, clothes on their back, a roof over their children's head. So, you know, I, 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 so I found it in times past as I did these speakings and events that I never tell anybody to leave. Also, don't nobody know how crazy that man is, but that woman. So she knows if she don't leave properly, she could lose her life. You know, you would know if your man says, I'm going to kill you, whether or not he's just saying it, I'm going to kill you, or he, he going to kill you. If he finds you, he going to kill you. So I'm not a fan of just telling people, just leave. Just up and leave right now. Let's, let's the experience. They was talking about leaving, so we going to leave today. No. <laughs> you need to be smart. And you need to think very carefully about your own particular situation and calculatively, like a chess game, sit back and plan how you need to safely leave, especially if you're in a volatile situation. So we're not telling anybody in a, a domestic situation, leave. You know, it's 441. Go ahead and leave, y'all. Just leave. Leave at 6 o'clock. No. <laughs> Guys, be smart about this. We all get in therapy. We're just discussing opinions, experiences and things like that, okay? Hey, Sheena. Um, Valerie said, I agree with Ronald too. Taking ownership makes you have to accept what you feel. Taking ownership makes you have to see the good and bad in you, not necessarily the other person. If you don't get the fruit of your own ownership, you would take it into the next friendship slash relationship. You are toxic until you heal. That's absolutely the truth absolutely the truth. If I can do things all over again, I would not have gone into certain relationships because I wasn't healed from other relationships. I, a bad, you know, just, just, I wasn't properly healed and I, and I would have healed. Um, 
Kushan is saying, oh, and just because something within a relationship is not going well, doesn't mean that it's not meant to be. It could mean the two have to discuss things, more problems and issues. That's it, guys. I, I am so sorry for the interruptions. Um, you guys can keep the conversations going. I have to get ready to get out of here. I have a very, very important meeting that hopefully in a couple of weeks I'll be able to tell you guys about. Um, but I just wanted to say uh, we're still up in the air about the soulmate thing. No one's really said whether or not it's a thing or not. Uh, we've had some wonderful comments and we've had awesome discussion. But uh, so you can put in the comments, you know, after I'm gone, uh, whether or not you think the soulmate thing is an actual, factual, real thing. Um, keep the conversation going. Yes, like I said, you know, this is a judgment free zone. You can say what you feel, feel what you say. We can all be respectful to everyone. And we can agree to disagree always. That just keeps the conversation interesting, seasoning salt on the competition. Yes. So I'm about to go. Uh, oh, thanks, Don. Thank you so much. Uh, also, guys, let me know in the comments section whether or not you want this to be uh, continued to do a part three. I don't come on on Tuesdays and Thursdays anymore because I got so many wonderful things happening in my career. <laughs> um, that I don't have the time now to do two days a week. So therefore I am only doing Thursdays. Thursdays from four to 4.30, if we can keep this internet stuff working properly <laughs> and things of that magnitude. Let me read two more comments because people are very, very passionate about this. Okay, David is saying, I agree with Ronald because if you first know how to love and respect yourself, then you would and should have a clear understanding of the person you are involved with. And if it's a true and sincere from the heart thing, then there should be success in that relationship. And Otis is saying, I believe in soulmates and I believe that it is all caps, a fact. The problem is we don't know how to wait all caps for that right one all caps <laughs> and y'all keep all capping over there in the comment section i'm gonna have to go also put in there whether or not you want me to continue the conversation because there's so many things i did not get to cover with the soulmate thing and the soul ties and sex uh, that we create making us think we didn't met our soulmate you know because some very talented sexual people out here you know that can mess your mind up mess with your noodle <laughs> Okay, Susie is saying, if you are only doing it once a week, make it an hour show. I'll talk to my production team about that, um, Sue. That, that sounds valid. I will talk to them about that. So since I'm only doing it once a week, make it Thursdays an hour show is Susie's suggestion. Well, I have to go, guys, and hopefully I'll be coming back with some good news um, and things like that. I just want to say I love you, I love you, I love you. Thank you, guys, for your patience. <laughs> And all that's going on with my technical issues and also me having to leave for three weeks and things like that. All uh, the prayers and the love that's still being sent to me, uh, you know, for what I've gone, the tragedy in my family. And I just thank you guys for that. You know, like I said, we all need friends and we all need therapy. And this is the place to get it. The less D experience. Love you much, guys. Love you, love you, love you. Keep the comments going. Let's talk.